I need your help. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Mari. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a chatty techo kaigi before the end of 2022 because I'm struggling to figure out what exactly I want to bring with me into 2023. And I'm hoping that by sharing my problems with you all, some of you may have some great suggestions for what you think may be the best solution. So that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, let's get started. So as you can see, I have been reunited with my beloved planners. Uh, they arrived um, maybe last month, um, a couple weeks ago, and it was a very emotional reunion, I'm happy to say. So let's start with the things that I'm definitely sure I'm bringing with me into 2023, and then we'll move into what I'm struggling with. <laughs> This has been my diary since maybe February this year, but I did back journal for the month of January in here. This is the B6 Stalogy in the black. It's just the regular grid lined notebook. This is actually the only journal that I maintained throughout the whole year. So even when I fell off of all of my other planners, this is the one that stayed with me because I always, 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 always need some sort of vent, <laughs> a place to vent. And this is where all of my feelings and thoughts are written down and it's almost stream of consciousness and it's just somewhere where I go to process. And I've always, always had some type of journal like this in my life. And so this was an absolute no brainer for me. I knew that even if I was going on a month-long trip, I knew that I needed to have this at the minimum because if I don't, then my thoughts kind of just get all jumbled up and it's just not that great for my mental health. This is definitely coming with me into 2023 because I don't think I've even finished halfway through this journal. This is how much I still have left to go in this journal. That is a lot of pages. And if I was able to fit an entire year inside of half of this journal, then I'm pretty sure that this is going to last me for the rest of 2023 as well. And I'm perfectly happy to continue using this journal. I love the paper. I love everything about it. And it's just the perfect place for me to pour all of my thoughts and feelings into. So the only thing I guess I would change is usually on top of this, I've removed it for the video, but I usually have a clear cover on it and it's getting kind of boring. So if you have any suggestions for really pretty B6 covers, then please let me know because so far, I think the only thing I've been looking at is the Moterm covers and I don't know, I'm kind of 50-50 on those. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down below because I'm definitely looking to spice this up for next year. Now let's move on to the next thing that I'm very, very sure about. Yes, this is my health and wellness journal and I'm finally reunited with it. I know I recently did a video on the Hobonichi Weeks dupe, but my God, it does not compare at all. So yeah, this is how I've been using it. Um, yeah, it's just been amazing. It really gives me like a great overview of how I've been feeling every single month, how I'm doing with my habits, if I'm feeling anxious, particularly anxious that month. And then at the bottom, I usually keep a mood tracker. So I fell off of it at the beginning of June. And now we are in November, but since I received this, I have been keeping track of my priorities, which is my steps and my anxiety and exercise. So that's been really, really amazing. And oh my God, okay, this is, this was a huge discovery for me. <laughs> but as you might know, in my past videos and in my Passport Traveler's Notebook, the only pen that I've been using is this Muji 0.38 black gel point pen. Yes, of course, it doesn't smudge inside of, you know, the Muji notebooks, but when I used it inside of the Hobonichi Weeks and then I immediately like run my finger over it, it does not smudge. It doesn't smudge. So 
I don't know why I was trying to make the fountain pen work for so long, but yeah, apparently this really cheap an affordable pen <laughs> works great inside of the Hobonichi Weeks and I I like how my handwriting turns out. That kind of just completely eliminated the whole smudging issue that I've been having since the beginning of the year and I'm very very happy about that because now that means I can write and flip between pages and not worry at all about how it's gonna smudge and I don't need to keep some kind of blotting paper in between. And I've tested it multiple times and there's just no smudging. I mean, if a lot of ink comes out of here and then you immediately touch it, then yes, there might be a little tiny smudge. But apart from that, it's been amazing. So yeah, I mean, look at this. There's no smudging. So all this to say that I'm definitely bringing this health and wellness journal into 2023 and I will be keeping it in a Hobonichi Weeks as well. Just like my diary, it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, this has worked out so, so well, and it may be one of my favorite planners <laughs> out of everything that I've used so far. All right, now let's talk about this beauty. So this is my everyday carry, as you probably already know if you've been following me. And yes, this has been with me now on two travels, which is very exciting. It has developed this beauty mark here, which I have no idea where it came from, but I'm trying not to let it bother me. <laughs> I'm trying not to let it bother me. I've kind of switched up the setup a little bit. So we have my bullet journal in here and then my daily log in here. And then I've switched out my finance tracker for this monthly journal. This is the one that I was reunited with because, yeah, this is the one that I created the photo journal in and also my self-care tracker, which as you can see, fell off mid-May. That is when I fell into my deep, deep dark hole. And I've just been keeping it in this setup because I thought maybe I'll figure out what I want to do with it for the rest of the year. And I don't know, it's just nice to have a monthly calendar in my bullet journaling setup. Now let me share my problems because, <laughs> okay, first of all, let's just say I know that I will be bringing in this daily journal with me into the new year. It will not be inside of this, these Muji dot grid notebooks, just because I've realized that I can only fit in one month in here before I have to switch over to a new one. And I don't really want to have 12 different tiny notebooks like this to archive at the end of the year. I would much prefer to have it all inside a single notebook. And so I'm still debating which notebook I want to be using for next year, but I have been leaning towards the daily moleskine. So yes, as soon as that probably starts in January 1st, then that's what I will be using as a daily journal. So this is also definitely coming with me into the new year. Now, what I'm not so sure about is what I'm going to be using as my bullet journal. So yes, this is working absolutely amazing uh, since September. And I've really, really, really loved being inside of a traveler's notebook. I feel like I always return to the passport size in the traveler's notebook because it's just so portable and it's so cute and it has everything I need inside of such a compact size. So this is definitely, definitely something I will always love. But do I want to be inside of a traveler's notebook as a bullet journal for 2023? I'm not entirely sure yet. So this is where you come in. Please help. <laughs> so my issue with this setup is that once I don't have a daily journal inside of here anymore, I think at most, I would probably just have a monthly and a dot grid notebook as my bullet journal. And that kind of feels really empty for a passport traveler's notebook. I always put minimum like three notebooks inside of here. I just feel like that gives it 
the nice chunkiness that I like. And I don't really want to have to add a whole other notebook just because I want to achieve that chunkiness. <laughs> if that makes sense. So when I think that there's only going to be two notebooks inside of here, I kind of, I'm not sure if I want to use this as a bullet journal. And another thing is um, the traveler's notebook, obviously it's perfect for travel because you can have multiple different notebooks inside one compact package. Um, but when you're at home, I feel like it's not really necessary. So, okay, what else am I thinking about as a bullet journal for 2023? Here is my beloved Hobonichi Weeks bullet journal that I started in December, I think, of 2020. Yeah. And then continued all the way until I fell off of it in May. Ever since this has been back in my life, I have been trying to use it as a bullet journal, but I don't know. The spark just seems to be gone for me. Um, it's not as exciting to be in this journal in this planner and as you can see like I tried to set it all up and I used I didn't even finish the highlights for that week and then I kind of just <laughs> haven't set it up for this week yeah so I'm not really sure if I want to be inside of a Hobonichi Weeks for 2023 as a bullet journal as a health and wellness journal it's absolutely perfect but do i want to use it as a bullet journal i'm not quite sure yet so that's well that's one option also another thing is i don't really like the colors this year for the mega and i'm not really excited about any of the other regular hobonichi weeks covers either apart from the aurora judy which is the only one that i bought um I don't even like the, the basic colors that they have this year. I don't really like the purple, I don't like the green, the blue is just too bright for me, and the pink is just, it's not as cute as this one. So yes, I'm struggling with that as well, and because none of them were appealing for me, that's the reason I only got one this year. I think in my latest Hobonichi Weeks flip through, I was mentioning how I don't really know how to use the weekly spreads anymore because although I used it a lot in the first months that I was in the Hobonichi Weeks, that is because I, I stopped myself from using the notes pages as a daily, daily space. But then as soon as I did start using the notes pages as a daily journaling space, I started to use the weeklies less and less until it got to the point where I was barely writing anything in the left side. I have thought of maybe converting it into a one line a day on the left, but then when I think of doing that, it's like I do still need to have a weekly overview to know what's coming up. This is the other option. So I've had this A6 red Stalogy for a while. I bought it when I was still in Vancouver. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it as a bullet journal just yet. The only thing that's holding me back is just its size. Having been inside of the Passport Traveler's Notebook for a couple months now, I'm really enjoying the small size. It's just it's just cute, first of all, but also it's all I need. And this is a lot bigger than that. And, you know, if I do want to carry around my bullet journal with me, then this isn't really something that I would gravitate towards. I would even prefer a Hobonichi Weeks over a this kind of size. I don't know why. Insert picture here, but <laughs> I have been considering the pocket bullet journal as a bullet journal for 2023. I like the size. I like the fact that it's stock grid. I would be choosing a hardcover probably. Okay, so that is what I'm thinking for 2023. I know what I will be sticking with, but I'm not quite sure what will be my bullet journal, which is honestly the most important part of this whole thing because without a bullet journal, my life is going to be a mess. So if you have any suggestions or any 
tactics you think might work with either the passport or the Hobonichi Weeks or the Stalogy or the Pocket Bullet Journal, then please let me know because I'm struggling and I don't know what to do. Maybe it would also help if you let me know what, what you are thinking to use as a bullet journal for 2023 and why it works for you and why you would recommend it or why you wouldn't recommend it. Um, I, I love reading all of your comments. So yeah, um, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye!